Five instructions in place when he was involved in an accident 11 years ago. This led to a years-long court battle between his family over his fate. His Catholic parents fought for his treatment to continue, while Lombard's wife and other relatives argued he would not have wanted to live in the state he was in. C'est un soulagement, évidemment. C'est pas. It's a relief, of course. It's not sad. People are offering me their condolences and support, but what happened is the right thing. This is what we've been waiting for for years. It's like reason has finally won. Vincent was in a vegetative state. He wouldn't have wanted to keep on living like that. Out of respect for him, we had to stop keeping him in this state. Now he's passed away in the best possible conditions. I hope he's now resting in peace. Well, Vincent Lambert's parents, however, are calling his death a state crime. Well, to discuss this case, I'm joined now by Jacqueline Jankel, National Secretary of ADMD, a French association promoting the right to assisted suicide and euthanasia. Well, thank you for uh, taking time to speak to us here on the program. Uh, this is a very particularly tricky case, isn't it, given that both sides are completely divided. Um, how can one decide whether or not he you know, would have wanted to have stayed on life support when he didn't give any instructions? Well, actually, the only thing that was missing was uh, advanced directives, which he had written, and which most people his age don't think of writing. But his wife said that he would never have wanted to be kept that way. And in all the countries where euthanasia and assisted suicide are accepted, the first person uh, who is listened to is the wife or the husband, not the parents. So this, this case would never have happened in the Benelux countries nor in Switzerland. Uh, it's a case which is absurd. Can you imagine being uh, locked into your body like... Uh, like in a coffin for 10 years and to be obliged to, 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 to do that? I mean, it's torture. Well, explain, to us, yeah, explain to us, if you can, then the gaps, if there are any, in French law which allowed this toing and froing to take place over the last decade. Well, the pro problem in France is that we don't really have a law. Uh, the law, uh, which is called the Leonetti law, is uh, not a, does not really... Um, favor the patient. It's a law which is in favor of the doctors and protects the doctors, but not the patient. Uh, it only allows a deep and continuous sedation until the patient uh, uh, dies, if the patient is really already dying. I mean, it doesn't really, ex it doesn't really uh, give uh, any uh, possibility of, of real choice. So um, in, in this case, none of this would have happened had Vincent written advanced directives, but he didn't. And so the, the person one should have listened to was his wife and one didn't. And so that's why the parents managed to keep him alive for 10 years, which in my opinion is, uh, has been 10 years of torture. Where does this leave your campaign now? Are you going to be joining other groups across Europe to try to campaign for a Europe-wide legislation for the right to die? Well, we already are. We already are in touch with each other. We already have a, a European Right to Die Society. We have a World Federation for Right to Die City and for, right, for the Right to Die Dignity. And we're all in contact with each other. We all would like to have a law like the Benelux countries, or at least like uh, the law we have in Switzerland. All of us. 90% French Jacqueline Jenkel, National Secretary of the ADMD, the French Association promoting the right to assisted suicide. Thanks for taking time.